Okay. The night passes uneventfully. Great. Uh, Amir will, when he wakes up early in the morning, he'll, uh, he'll kind of check on Logan and make sure he was okay if there was rest. And then he'll go about packing up the camp, putting up the fire, settling people's belongings that are like out in the open or like, you know, clearly like like leftover like trash or anything like that will kind of scoot aside, but he won't touch anybody's personal belongings. So then we'll just wait for the company to wake up. Uh, Logan wakes up, does uh, kind of a check of the weather. There's a nature check for Ah, um, it's clear now, but you definitely see clouds to the east that look ominous. There could be bad weather before nightfall. Gotcha. Um, I asked Duridan or Duran. Whatever his name is, how much, Durban. Uh, how Durban, how long it would take to get to the next ca uh, sheltered campsite? After yeah. I kick him awake because he's a drunk. Uh, he wakes up, takes a long gulp of water from his skin. Well, there's shelter at the summit, but it's not a place you'd want to stop. Cold up there. The next real campsite is on the other side of the mountains. It'll take us most of the day to get over. Well, we'd best get going then, eh? Yep. I... I'd okay. like to make it on the summit if possible. Camping in the cold sounds miserable. Okay. I thought you dwarves were used to the cold. Uh, survivable and used to it, sure, but comfortable in it, not much. You like a warm fire just as much as anybody. Okay. So, the land uh, climbs steadily as you travel for the day. Um, the trees start to get sparser, although they're still there, and the ground becomes rockier. There's still a clear path. You wind your way up the mountain, sometimes over switchbacks. You've left the stream at this point. A little sign on the rock that others have passed here, but Durbin seems to know the way, and he points it out to Logan as you, as you uh, travel. The weather, though, starts to get worse and worse as the day goes on. Mid-morning, it starts to sprinkle. And by noon, it's a cold rain. Uh, a little bit after noon, you get above the snow line. And the rain turns to a light snow. Your old pull his cloak tied around him and pull his head up over his head. Should I stay bundled? Yeah, the woman will uh, flip up the uh, hood on his cloak, but uh, he's also constantly sticking out his tongue and, and darting his head from side to side to catch snowflakes here and there. <laughs> awesome. Is it just starting to snow, or is there snow on the ground already? There's snow on the ground, but it's older snow. Uh, it had started to melt with the season, and the drifts aren't high. The path is, you know, mostly clear, although there is a, a layer of snow on the ground, but you have to be careful of your step. There's ice underneath in some places. The next time, like, Logan wanders near the group center scouting a bit, I'll just call out to him. 
keep your keep your eyes peeled for tracks in the snow. It should be easy to pick up any signs of uh, animal or human passage. Yeah, I'll take a look around as I'm putting my cloak on and pulling my hood over my head to keep myself warm. Run a perception check and see what I can find around us. See okay. if there's anything we need to know about. Keep your eyes peeled. It's a little harder to see now with the snow coming down. Um, but you can't see any tracks in the snow just yet. It all looks fresh. I think with everybody all bundled up, we're just going to have to keep trekking forward. I. You're about two thirds of the way up the mountain now by say one o'clock ish in the afternoon, but the sky is dark and it's hard to tell the time. The higher you get, the trees disappear and now you're just moving amongst the rocks. The snow comes down harder and still harder. And by two or two thirty, it's real white out conditions. You can hardly see anymore. The wind is blowing hard. It's freezing cold. Very, very low visibility. And the snow Difficult has started to, to pile up and drifts a little bit as you walk. Yes. Uh, everybody give me a constitution check. And you can just roll that in the chat. You don't need to put it in the tower. Okay. Some of us are very cold. Maybe you're very cold. Um, Fitz, Did you roll it from the ability side or the safe side? Um, actually... Oh, I rolled the ability like a dummy. Yeah, actually, I should have asked for a save. Go ahead and roll a constitution save if you roll just to check. Cool. Pretty Basically the same result. Rip. Okay. Uh, yeah, so several of you are, are very cold. Um, so cold, you start to get exhausted. I'll, uh, I'll kind of stop and lean over and catch my breath. Uh, steam coming from my, under my hood. Look up. We must stop soon. I kept going. I'm afraid I might fall down face first in the snow. Torgrim uh, was coming up hard behind Emir and uh, manages to stop without slipping. Right, so uh, dig in. I'll look to uh, Durbin. How far until the camp again? Durbin looks very, very cold, uh, and he's he's got his cloak wrapped around him very tight. He has to yell a little bit to be heard over the wind. At this rate, we won't make the camp at the bottom of the mountain, but if we can make it to the summit, there's shelter there. We can stay there for the night. How much longer? I yell back to him, an edge to my voice. Uh, he looks up into the snow. We have to be close. It's hard to say. I can't see anything really in all this damn snow. What kind of storm is this at this point in the spring? We'd be fools to travel up the summit and fall to our deaths in the blizzard. So maybe we should take shelter and look around kind of. Are there any trees or anything nearby? No. There's nothing. Just tundra, huh? Uh, it's just rocks. It's rocks and uh, and the slope. 
Um, there's, you know, stones piled about, but no really clear shelter from, from this kind of cold. Um, a dolomite is actually, uh, it never drops his grin. Uh, and I'd actually like to use prestidigitation to warm my clothes. Okay. Such a good kinship. Very nice. That helps. You do feel a little warmer. Uh, Although, you can still feel the cold through your feet. Are, are the rocks loose rocks that could be used to form a wind barrier? Uh, mostly larger boulders. There are some loose rocks, um, but you're really at in the the stony mountainside territory here. There are a few trees, but they're they're pretty scraggly and and uh, bare. Amir will just kind of breathe out a sigh of frustration. Let's continue on. If we stop too long, we'll just freeze even more. Yeah, we need to keep moving. Logan, can you please look ahead for some sign of shelter while you're scouting? I'm gonna run a, that'll be a survival check. Okay. Um, Logan, you can sort of with your, your survival, you can find basically the best path through the snow along the direction you're going uh, and try to find, you know what I mean? The place where it's going to be easiest to move for the folks that are behind you. Try to right. tamp down a trail. I pull out one of my hempen ropes and try and insist to the group that we all uh, tie ourselves to it so we don't get lost in the whiteout. The mere kind of chuckles, smart plan. Unless, of course, one of us falls off of a cliff as he ties the rope about himself. There's risks to any plan. Is everybody getting roped up? Yeah, rope up. Yeah, rope up. Yes. Okay. I don't know if this makes a difference or not, but I, my preferred method or my preferred terrain for natural explorers is actually mountains. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. You've definitely been in conditions like this before. Yeah. Uh, it takes you some, some coordination to get used to being roped to each other. And there are some moments of, you know, tugging on each other and knocking each other over a little bit, but after a few minutes, you get the hang of it. It's about another half hour. Uh, Logan, you're in front, right? Uh, roll perception for me. Just Logan or everybody? Uh, just Logan in the front. Okay. You see some tracks in the snow. You, it's hard to make them out because the snow is filling in almost as fast as, as uh, you know, you can make tracks behind you. But something moved through where you're at not long ago. As you press forward, all of a sudden, a huge shape, maybe 40 feet tall, appears out of the snow. And for a moment, you remember back to Durbin talking about stone giants yesterday. I was about to yell. I thought you said there weren't any giants. Durbin ch just chuckles to himself and he keeps moving. And after a moment, Logan, you realize it's a statue. It's a 40 foot tall statue of a man. His face is weathered. His features are gone. Rearing up out of the snow. This is uh, the top of the pass. And Durbin yells out, there's shelter behind the statue. Keep going. lead the party forward uh stay about 20 feet past uh just before we get to the shelter and just kind of take a look around see if we can find anything with the uh, where those tracks are coming from okay okay 
as you move forward, the tracks veer off to your left, and the statue is straight ahead. As you move closer, you notice that there's an old tower behind the statue. They're both up against cliff walls as the rocks come in around you. You can see the mountain comes down, not quite to a tunnel, but uh, a narrow gap between the two sides of the mountain. And in here, the statue was erected, and behind it are, are the remains of the tower. Uh, the top stories are gone, but the lower story seems to still be mostly intact, although there's no door anymore, and it's just a black opening inside, into the tower. Okay, uh, Logan unties himself. I suggest okay. everybody do the same. And Fitz, you two noticed um, the tracks as you went by. They're filled in, and you can see where they go off to the left as well, but you also can't really tell what would have made them. They're large, though. If Logan hasn't pointed them out to the party, I do. Mir kind of takes a glance over. Tracks too safe. What sort? Can't tell. Can't tell, but they're big. Maybe it's those friendly hill giants. Probably best we take shelter in this tower and try to keep low. We'll need a fire, but I, I look at the entrance to the tower uh, door. Is it impossible to like drape a cloak or something over the entrance to kind of block most of the uh, the light of the, of the fire? You probably could. Um, is the statue like right next to the tower, or do we have to like walk past it a ways? Uh, the statue is sort of built almost right up against the cliff uh, on the left hand side, almost into the cliff. Uh, the tower is directly behind it, also built right up against the cliff. Okay. Um, so, like as we walk towards the tower and past the statue, I presume, if it's adjacent, um, I'll stop and kind of run my hands over the statue, admiring it. And, uh, do a stone cutting history check to see if I can figure out any details about it. Mm. Should have rolled advantage there. Let me know if that works. Uh... It did, although you're also at disadvantage because uh, of yep. the exhaustion. Yeah. yeah, so it just came out even. You can tell that it's human make, but not much more than that. Okay. We need to get everybody inside. We need to uh, get inside this tower and get a fire built. The fellow dwarf will take a look at it as he's coming in too, using stone cutting as well. Yeah, I'll continue on, not wanting to freeze to death and knowing that I'm exhausted. I'll get the tower as quick as I can. And, and Torgrim, you can tell the same. Um, it's definitely human make and uh, probably several hundred years old uh, at the at the earliest. Or at the most recent, excuse me. All right. Relay Likely that is... Um coming in and shaking off snow. Okay. All right, well, the in inside of the tower uh, is absolutely empty. It's bare stone. Nothing's been here uh, in a long time. But the roof is intact and it is dry. Look to uh, Ed Oldman. I don't suppose you have another one of those magic fires in stock as they shiver. Uh, plenty, as long as we have some wood to keep it alive. Amir kind of just looks miserably out the door of the tower and shivers. <laughs> Since he's been there before, Fitz asks our, I can't remember his name, our guide. If he knows anything about the the statue. 
Oh, there was a, a small, and he's shivering as he's speaking. There was a, a small kingdom of men here before the orcs came. I don't know what it was called. The lords never returned when the orcs were driven away. This must have been their make. Uh, Logan takes his bedroll, uses it to block up the door and give everybody a little bit of uh, insulation from the cold and suggests that everybody strike up one of their torches for heat. Very smart. Okay. Putting the, uh, the blanket uh, over the bedroll over the doorway um, definitely blocks out the worst of the, the wind. Uh, it's still very cold inside, but you don't have the wind chill to deal with anymore. Yeah, Amir will uh, you know, strike up his torch and kind of wedge it into the ground as best he can and sit next to it and try to warm himself. Fitz follows his lead. Teeth chattering and looks around the room. I suppose we should make camp here for the night. Durbin just nods and puts his back against the the wall of the uh, tower and huddles himself up, taking a little sip from his flask. If if the storm breaks, we can make it down the mountain in the morning. Amir looks around. Anybody uh, warm enough to keep watch? Logan will keep watch. Everybody else should try to huddle up together and stay warm. Torgrim can stay on watch a little bit too since he isn't wasn't affected by the cold as much as everybody else. Where are you guys uh, keeping watch? Um, well, before I keep watch, I want to do something. So. Yeah, presumably you don't want to be in the tower, I'm guessing, because you won't be able to see out past the bed wall. Right. The temperature inside the tower does get noticeably better with some of the torches burning. It's not by any means warm, but it's no longer freezing cold. Does, uh, like, mechanics-wise, does exhaustion drop off after we warm, or do we need to rest for it to go? Uh, after a long rest, you lose one level of exhaustion. Okay. Can that be counteracted by increasing the warmth in the room? Um, no, but increasing the warmth in the room does keep you from having to make more constitution saves to avoid further levels of exhaustion. Basically, all, as you stay cold, uh, you're making one constitution save an hour to avoid getting progressively more right. and more frozen. Gotcha. And presumably, we only have one level of exhaustion at the moment. Correct. Yeah, yeah. so Amir will just bundle up and put his head down once he's warm and try to sleep. Okay, I'm going to make my way out the door, close it behind me. Um kind of track back to go see if I can find those tracks. Okay. Oh, Torgrim will just stand outside the door then. I was going to suggest that Logan and I switch every hour, but uh, I'll stand outside the door on guard at this point. Okay. Uh, roll survival for me, Logan. Okay. You find uh, where the tracks were. You're able to retrace um, the steps of the group. The wind is still howling and the snow is coming down pretty good. Although in here, where the statue is between the, the walls of the mountains, the wind is a little bit less. 
you're able to find where the tracks diverged and headed off to the, I guess it would be the south. Uh, but pretty soon they're swallowed up in the snow. Okay. Um, I am going to head back to the camp, and on my way there, I'm going to leave a hunter's trap out in the snow. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and on your way back, um, you also are like find as you're wading through the snow, you find a little bit of wood that is absolutely soaked through, but you could drag it back if you wanted to to keep the fire going. Yeah, definitely. You want me to run an athletics check? Or... Nah. It's noticing that everyone is kind of dozed off and is still suffering from the cold, snuggles up a little bit co closer to Emre. Or Amir. Amir, yep. Uh, before Golden goes to bed, he's going to recast Preston Agitation on his clothes just to make sure that he can at least drift off into sleep warmly and comfortably. Very smart. Okay. Uh, and Torgrim, you see uh, Logan coming back out of the snow, dragging a. Uh, uh, a snow-covered log behind him. Torgrim goes over to help him drag it back. And Logan tries to get that inside and uh, make a fire. It takes a little bit for it to uh, dry out enough and for the fire to catch. But between all the torches that are there and, and uh, burning another one, you're able to keep the fire up long enough that uh, fire catches on the, uh, the log you dragged in. So you've probably got enough wood there um, to keep the fire burning until morning. Good. Or pretty close to it, at least. So, uh, in terms of watches, you guys are gonna are you guys gonna trade off every hour? Yeah. Once Amir's, uh, it's a long rest period of exhaustion. Okay, he kind of just stays down there. You guys can stay sleeping. Me and me and Turgrim can just kind of swap back and forth and make sure that your guys' exhaustion gets removed. Now, if you don't get like rest yourself, you'll get exhausted as well. So, probably a third person needs to help. Yeah, is it all is it all three of you that are exhausted? Yeah. I guess you should probably just split the shift in half so you can rest. Yeah, fine. Is our guide exhausted? He is quite exhausted. Yeah, he damn near died. Does uh, does that mean drunk? Uh, <laughs> yes and yes, both meanings of exhausted. He's shivering and still drinking as he tries to drift off to sleep. All right, well, yeah, we could do four on, four off if, if you want to, um, to continue rest, or can we do two and still get rest? So theoretically, uh, a rest is eight hours, and you can get rest. So this is not including Wapa. Wapa is one of those elf dudes. Theoretically, um, you can still get rest even if you take a two-hour watch in that eight-hour period as long as you're not like fighting during your watch right so as long as you're just like standing watch and then sleeping for six hours you still get the effects of a rest um for wapa it's basically the same except it's uh um you need four hours of you, you can't really like watch while you're trancing you're not asleep but you're not terribly perceptive or anything right you're meditating Yeah, so one of you can do six, and then the other can do four or whatever. Yeah, so I'll take six, like, let Torgrim sleep, and then he can, and then Torgrim can take the last four while I trance. Sounds good. 
Okay. Um, roll, uh, give me a perception roll up. Okay. Uh, and also give me a constitution check. Or a constitution save, excuse me. It's cold. It's definitely cold. But you do avoid uh, getting so cold you, you get exhausted. The wind is still blowing and the snow is coming down pretty hard. But no sign of anything else. It's very, very dark. You really can't see much of anything even with your, uh, your dark vision given how hard the snow is blowing. But your um, your six hours passes otherwise uneventfully. The fire burns down, but the coals are still burning by the time your shift is over, still giving off some warmth. Before I wake up, Torgrim, and go into my trance, I want to. Nature check to see what the weather is going to be like. Looks bad. Doesn't look good. You can't really tell too much given how uh, dark it is and, and how bad it is, but the feeling you get uh, is that it's going to be bad for a while yet. Yeah. All right. I wake up uh, Torgrim and do his watch, I guess. Ooh. Okay. It is very cold. Colder than you expected. You had a hard time getting to sleep at the beginning of the evening. And waking up, you wish you had more. Going out into the cold is hard. And uh, by a couple of hours into your shift, you're, you're shivering and, and tired. Um... You don't notice anything out of the ordinary, but just blinding snow and blowing wind. About, say, two and a half hours uh, into your into your watch, Durbin stirs and wakes up behind you, shivering. And he, you hear him stumble outward, and he, he comes out of the blanket into the snow. I see the weather's still good. B -b Balmy. He nods at you and, and smiles. Gotta take a piss. And he stumbles Watch off into the snow. He raises his hand back towards you. It's about five minutes later when you hear a scream. All right, I'll uh, smack the uh, my weapon against the door to wake people up. Could have a problem. And then the scream, I'm supposing, came from the way that he stumbled off. It did. Just one long yell and then nothing. Okay. Even exhausted, I guess I'll uh, start his direction. Right, Amir will rouse, flip back the bedroll, look around, and glean, like kind of squint through the uh, the blinding wind. It's it's dark still, correct? Right? It's still dark. Yes, it's probably um, maybe two hours before dawn. Okay. 
Did uh, do we get enough rest for exhaustion to drop, or are we still exhausted? You did. Everyone but uh, Torgrim is effectively rested. Yep. Yeah. I'll uh, grab my, my weapons and step out and look for Torgrim or whoever was supposed to be on watch. It. He's not really sure at this point. Yeah, probably see me stumbling off into the uh, wherever, which direction the, our pal went. I'll kind of jog to catch up. Hold, hold on a second. What's going on? Durbin went out to pee and just screamed. One scream only. Stopped going to see what that, what happened to him. And he went um, he went east, back the way you'd come through the the path you cut in the snow at the beginning of the night. Can we see his tracks? They've covered up. Um, make a survival check. A dull woman will get up, uh, grab a torch, light it, and draw his rapier and fall on the road. Okay. Uh, you can't see his tracks. You know, he, he headed back the way you came, and you can sort of see the impression in the snow where everyone came in yesterday, but other than that, you can't make out a thing. All right, Logan comes outside. <laughs> Make Program sure he points out the tracks to you as you come out. Make sure he points at the spot where he... Actually, I'll just go pick up my uh, hunter's trap, make sure nobody steps on it. You find Durbin dead in your trap? No, no, you don't. Come on. <laughs> uh, no, the trap has not been sprung. Uh, I too will run a survival check and see if I can discern anything else from the tracks. You can see that uh, somebody passed back the way you'd come in the snow. Um, you see the tracks and you can't see much farther than maybe uh, 15 feet out from the tower, but the, the tracks went that way. Is uh, everybody awake at this point? Are there still people sleeping? Uh, Fitz is up. But he decides to stay behind and watch after everyone's stuff and watch our camp. No sense in everybody getting lost in the snow. Yeah, Mira will kind of look around. We certainly want to charge off in the dead of night looking for him. We should proceed cautiously. Okay, so out of character for a second. Um, with the Mask of the Wild ability, I can attempt to hide. But can I actually, can I move? Or does that fall under stealth? Um, you can still... So what you do is you would make a stealth check. And so what Mask of the Wild allows you to do is hide under conditions normal people would not be able to hide under. Right. Um, then you'll you'll still have to roll stealth and you know contest that against somebody's perception, but okay. you do have an advantage in that the snow is coming down hard enough that it effectively counts as um, being heavily obscured more than say five feet away from you. Okay. Um, so I will roll stealth and then follow the tracks. And okay. Then if there's anything there, I guess I'll have to run a stealth check. Yeah, Amir will let Logan take the lead and stay a good, just far enough behind that he can't see him, but like slowly creep along the path where his footsteps are. Torgrim taps uh, Amir on the shoulder as they head off. I'll leave it to you two. I need to get warm. Okay, we'll, we'll come back if we spot anything. Torgrim goes back inside. Uh, Emir will look for Edelman and see if he's joining or if he went back to the tower as well. I think, uh, Scry, you said uh, Adol Adolman was coming? Uh, yes, for a torch and rapier drop. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, like, stay far enough back that I don't impede on Logan's ability to kind of scout. Uh, and I'll, I'll suggest the same uh, to Edelman. 
We should stay back in that local. Poke ahead. The torch might give us away. I shout from the tower that you guys should tie yourselves together. Uh, I don't think I brought my rope with me, so I don't go back for it, but I'm just kind of relying on the light of the torch for now. Fighting things that make tracks this big while tied together is probably not a good idea. We talk about we can uh, AT -AT, or ATST this. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Logan, you creep forward through the snow stealthily. Uh, about another 15 feet down the mountain. You come across a, a pool of fresh blood. A lot of it. And there's signs that someone was dragged away to the south. Let me think a minute. I'm going to run an investigation check on whether or not that amount of blood would lead to his death. It seems like a lot of blood, man. I don't know. It certainly can't be good for him. But you you can't tell. Hmm. Triage leadership decision. I go back and find Emmer. And Adeline, and uh, tell them what I found. And suggest that we go back to the tower and everybody stay together. Let the storm pass. What do you guys think? Try to save him or leave him for dead? So wait, uh, Logan came back. Yeah, I came back. To, I came back to you guys to tell you what I found. So I'll, I'll just say back to you. So you. Think he died? And was dragged away by some monster? Yeah, no way of telling. There's a lot of blood, but uh, no way of telling whether he's dead or not. And I would assume that whatever did it to him was intending on his death. Kind of nod grimly. Let's head back to the tower and discuss. With the group. Um, adult woman doesn't stop grinning, but he nods and grinning. So once we get back, I'll kind of push aside the bedroll and walk into the tower. Well, yep. bad news, and I'll, I'll nod to Logan and explain what you saw. About 50 feet down the other slope of the mountain, found a large puddle of blood. Uh, looks like his body was dragged away can't tell if it was enough to kill him, but he's definitely gravely wounded. And being as he's been drinking and it's extremely cold outside, highly doubt that he's going to survive that. I suggest we hold up here, stay together, and let the storm pass. I would hate for one of us to be in this position and not have age from the company. But it might be foolhardy to charge off in the dead of night in the storm and try to save him. Well, we can take a vote amongst everybody and see if we want to go try and find him once uh, the daylight comes up. <laughs> Not that seems fair. Agreed. Logan, we know your vote. No. I'll. Mir seems to stop for me to consider. I say we wait until light and switch for him as well. Though it saddens me. I also agree that we should wait for light and better weather. I don't think we should. 
we spend ourselves too much trying to find them. But should we find them, I might be able to heal the souls. I think if we go back out there, even in the cold, in the sunshine, with the sun shining, Torgrim's already exhausted. He needs to get some rest. Uh, I'm willing to go out on my own uh, and see if I can find where the tracks lead to, see if I can glean any information from it so we know what we're up against and whether he's dead or not. Torgrim looks up from where he's huddled miserably and, and uh, says, if you find him and need help getting him, I'll forge out there, but uh, I think my fingers are turning black. Are my fingers turning black? <laughs> 